so my topic is uh, ptosis unfolded the controversies and advances ptosis is a subject very close to my heart because i have been operating since long and now it's become part and parcel of my oculoplasty surgery many of you who are doing ptosis surgery will relate with it i'll just let you know not the uh, resident uh, the basic challenges that we face as you all know ptosis is the drooping of the upper eyelid and it can be congenital when it can be simple when there are no associated anomalies it can be when it is associated with anomalies it is called complicated congenital ptosis not the simple one and those anomalies can be superior rectus weakness it may be associated with blepharophimosis syndrome or the marcus gunn jaw winking syndrome what is must in a case of ptosis and that is a thorough examination that is must and why to decide the surgical procedure of choice and to avoid any post operative surprise aim of detailed history taking and thorough clinical examination it gives gives us three important points it will tell you whether it is simple or complicated it is congenital or it is acquired that will help you in your treatment plan and factors that can modify your treatment you will come to know with the clinical evaluation this is a small general work up which every uh, we should be doing our residents are trained like this that this procedure the vision then head post your symmetry lid crease very important because that will decide our point of in, uh, incision to be given and the cosmetic result later on lid fold then the palpebral fissure height that will give us the amount of ptosis mrd1 is more reliable than the vertical palpebral fissure height we if there is a discrepancy in both the things we would go with the mrd1 finally then ocular movements very important to rule out any squint associated pupillary reaction to uh, see if it is a case of horner syndrome or any third nerve palsy is associated with it lps action must to decide our uh, treatment plan how much we have to resect or we need to go for sling or whatever bell's phenomena again very important because that will decide how you have to proceed uh, you cannot uh, operate a patient and leave him with an exposure keratitis later on so that is very important to be assessed any marcus gun associated or corneal sensation again so that you are careful while operating that there is no exposure keratitis now coming to the examination as i said ocular motility especially in myogenic ptosis is very important to rule out third nerve palsy presence of strabismus is very important to be assessed especially vertical if it is there it entails that it has to be corrected prior to the ptosis surgery this is a dictum that has to be followed strabismus surgery especially the vertical one has to be operated before you go ahead with the ptosis surgery visual acuity should be assessed to record any amblyopia present especially in cases of congenital ptosis refraction cycloplegic is a must again because ptosis can lead to an isometropia besides causing the uh, an isometropic amblyopia and that uh, 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 this disuse and dry and uh, amblyopia due to covering of the eye uh, pupillary area so both these amblyopia should be in mind and we should see if there's any refractive error before going ahead with any other treatment now what are the various controversies and advances or the challenges that we face especially congenital ptosis is a challenging management issue as such the challenge begins with the evaluation of a pre verbal child in the presence of anxious patient such a small child coming child comes at an age of 1 year sometimes at 6 months if the patients are more aware and you have to assess the patient it is a difficult proposition and we have to determine the etiology of ptosis in such cases when patient enters the examination room observe the head posture if there is any chin elevation also observe the frontalis over action which will indicate that there is ptosis is severe so these two points will help you in deciding now next when to operate considering how the eyelid position affects the child visual and psychosocial development you will decide the time of your surgery special consideration as i said risk of amblyopia as you can see in this first uh, the uh, pupillary area is almost being covered so that way that is why this is a case that has to be operated earlier while in this case it is a mild ptosis so you can uh, you can wait especially in children which ideally is to operate only after 5 years unless and until it is severe and leading to amblyopia otherwise 5 years is the minimal and later on in uh, otherwise i just like this in ye pointer nahi chal raha aapka if it is a mild ptosis you can carry on if patient is not having cosmetic problem you can carry on till the teenage so timing of ptosis repair or interval for follow up depends on uh, on these factors then there are plethora of surgical techniques and materials that have been developed each with their own benefits and drawbacks we'll discuss surgical challenges also include the lack of intraoperative feedback regarding the dynamic eyelid height and contour under general anesthesia under local anesthesia you can give a frontal nerve block and you can still have the ocular movements and still decide the position of your eyelid on the table at times but with ga this possibility is also lost so you are entirely dependent on your preoperative workup a preoperative consideration as i told amblyogenic 
if there's it is it is a bilateral ptosis leading to chin up position and if it affects the child social interaction sometimes the peer group pressure is so much that the parents want an early surgery so all these things you have to consider and accordingly proceed with the surgery if you have to consider for wait you want to wait till the child gets a little uh, old then remember that amblyopia is the prime most thing that should be in your mind it should not be there so conservative management in the meantime can be with the help of crutch glasses these are freely available this is not a definitive treatment you know so the crutch uh, the this extension of the crutch glass it fits in the uh, upper lid and it lifts the upper lid and if the compliance is good and the parents are aware and they can help out it is the best way to carry on for some time because the later you do the better the development of the lps is there and better results are there and as i said cosmetic is one concern and blaupia is another concern squint first and other associated anomalies are there they also need to be always interact with the patient pre operatively before you go ahead ideal results can't be obtained in every patient so never raise the graph of expectations of the patient too high always keep it even if you are doing regular surgery your results are good you are sure you'll be able to get but never raise the expectations of the patient keep it low because later on if you give a good result it will help him out but if you raise the expectation ki bilkul theek ho jayega and later on if it is an under or an over it's very difficult for you to answer explain the complications like for the first few post operative days lag of thelmos is going to be there a frost suture has to be there for few days so all these things better to explain pre operatively rather deal with it post operatively and a need for resurgery can be there and an informed consent is a must again the choice of surgical procedure will develop depend on the severity of ptosis the levator action and whether it is a simple one or a complicated one one again one thing to remember is quantify and classify ptosis at least in two different settings uh, better uh, you do it yourself and in two different times you do it once when the first visit it and once when you have to decided to take him up for surgery please confirm once again measure the levator function also in two different settings just to confirm your findings other subtleties that should be evaluated how much is the effort the child is used to utilize the involved how much is the frontalis how much is the that will give you a clue whether your surgery would be successful which surgery would be i'll just discuss presence of absence of bell's phenomena one for the exposure keratitis always under correct slightly when the bell's phenomena is poor if it is absolutely absent and uh, if it can you have to explain to the patient the pros and cons of an exposure keratitis or corneal trauma so you have to these cases are a bit tough to deal and you have to decide whether you want to go with the surgery or not but at times when it is a must always remember to slightly under correct strength of the eyelid crease again gives you a clue how much your lps resection can be helpful for the surgery surgeries you all are aware fasinella for the mild one levator resection or levator plication for the moderate ones and the bro suspension or sling for the severe ones and this choice will depend on determining the appropriate should be individualized and obtaining ideal surgical outcomes can be both challenging and controversial so it depends on surgeon to surgeon at times sometimes a case of uh, mild ptosis uh, with good lps action some people would go for fasinella but with people who have better with lps in their hands they would go for an lps also so these things depend sometimes with surgeon factor also as we know good levator function fasinella can be done lps as well resection or plication fasinella indication mild ptosis with good levator function it is a favored procedure and especially phenylephrine test should be done prior to see whether it would be the muller how is the action of the muller's muscle ratio of tarsectomy to eyelid elevation is 2 mm of tarsectomy to 1 mm of desired elevation bitheria at all have modified the surgery and made it a bit easy previously we only one set of sutures used to be passed nowadays why this is not working your pointer acha theek hai chal gaya i don't know so the theek hai chal gaya so this is the one set of suture over here and one set over here this is very helpful till the end of the surgery and we are able to do it these are few results of uh, modify uh, this vitheria technique of fasinella cervet surgery of modified uh, uh, mild ptosis i've done then drawbacks can be it it does not create an eyelid cle uh, eyelid lid crease corneal complications previously used to be higher when the sutures catgut suture used to be used nowadays with vitreal suture and with good exteriorization of the knot the uh, corneal complications are few they, it is just still not preferred by many surgeons because the results are somewhat somewhat unpredictable now coming to fair to good levator function resection levator resection and plication are the two things we can do uh, you are aware of these indication and uh, it has the added benefit of allowing creation of a lid crease which is cosmetically very acceptable in the post op period this is the beard technique method uh, uh, measurements that we follow for uh, moderate ptosis 
Then a significant drawback of all procedures is the question of where to position the eye under general anesthesia. As I told you, local it can be helpful, but with children you are operating in general anesthesia. This is another uh, Burke's method of following when you have uh, how much of process and where should you ideally play the, place the uh, lid on the table. Suppose it is a more than 10 millimeter, you can place the lid 3 to 4 millimeter below the limbus. So these are Practically, I would suggest you that every surgeon develops his own technique sooner or later, but initially when you are doing, you can follow this algorithm and you can go ahead. Uh, the salient features of levator resection are that you uh, incise the orbital septum, expose the vitnals, meticulous hemostasis can be there, and you can disinsert the LPS from the tarsal plate. You have to be careful about, uh, medially about the superior oblique tendon and laterally about the lacrimal gland, when especially if you are doing a supramaximal one, and create a good eyelid crease by taking appropriate bites from the LPS in the end. So these are few cases of levator resection. Coming to the plication, uh, not very much favored procedure, but done definitely. Uh, Resurgery can be done, less time consuming, no muscle is excised, and it has a greater chance of drooping from the fourth week onwards. So it is a bit drawback. So surgeons still don't prefer it as the first procedure of choice. This have, I have, however, done few cases of levator plication. Now coming to the poor levator function, we have two options. The uh, controversy lies over here. Some, uh, some people with five millimeter of ptosis would prefer to go for a sling. But some, I would prefer with five or at least 4.5, I go with a supramaximal levator resection. A little tire, uh, troublesome procedure. You have to do around 25, 26 mm of levator resection, which is a bit difficult. But definitely it is worth doing because you give a good cosmetic result in the end with a good lid crease. Management of children, uh, as I told you, this are the two procedures. Uh, if there is no frontalis recruitment on the lip, if you do not see that the uh, child is using the frontalis more, then your frontalis sling procedure is not going to be very helpful. That case is LPS resection supramaximal should be taken. So keep this one clue in your mind. So when the eyelid elevators do not function or if there is little drive to lift the involved eyelid, obtaining good surgical outcomes can be extremely challenging. Then again, if it is a unilateral ptosis with poor levator function, you have number of options available. You can do a unilateral sling, or you can previously as bilateral sling used to be done with unilateral disinsertion of levator, bilateral sling without disinsertion of levator, supramaximal levator resection of vitnal slings. Each have their own controversies. I won't go due to shortage of time. But unilateral sling is the preferred technique nowadays if uh, you do not, uh, because good symmetry can be obtained with unilateral sling also. But previously, bilateral Bilateral sling used to be the choice. Uh, uh, we people are doing bilateral sling without disinsertion of levator of the normal side also because the patients are generally parents are not liking the factor that the normal eye is also being operated. So generally they do not give consent for the normal eye getting operated. So unilateral sling becomes a choice generally. Supramaximal levator resection you can go up to 30 mm though I have done around 27, 28. It has better outcome. Definitely there are few disadvantages of conjunctival prolapse when the, I did the initial case I had conjunctival prolapse significant but soon you learn the pro, uh, ways how to prevent it. A phonix forming suture at the end of the surgery prevents the conjunctival prolapse and gives you good result. These are few cases of severe ptosis you can see with poor levator action and I've done a supramaximal levator resection and they are very happy growing up and good results are there. Uh, then I will leave this. Now coming to the uh, tissue that has you to be used for sling. We all know that uh, fascial arta is the best tissue available, but then an additional site of surgery is needed for that. So the preferred material nowadays easy going is the silicon sling which we are freely available, we are using it. So this is the facial arta definitely is the best, no doubt, if you can go ahead with it. But uh, we are nowadays, previously suture was also, proline suture used to be used. Nowadays this uh, upper silicon sleeve is freely available with two big needles and it is being used very commonly. However, uh, it definitely has the problem of elasticity and some time droop is there after a few uh, months or years also and granuloma formation can also be there. So silicon is commonly used. Then another controversy is whether to use a pentagon technique or the Crawford double triangle technique. My choice is the double triangle because it gives a lid contour which is better and it does not cause the heaping up of the tissue over the forehead area also. So after doing many cases of pentagon as well as front, uh, Crawford double triangle, I prefer the Crawford triangle in my cases and it definitely gives good result. Then this is the sling. Uh, which is sling cases that have been done. Then you can have this uh, Marcus Gunn jaw winking, you are all aware. Generally the procedure, previously we used to do bilateral sling, but nowadays unilateral levator excision with unilateral sling is done. So this can be done. Uh, this is a small video, if it plays, uh, I don't know.
never mind, we don't have one talk, so we will cover in time. 11.50 while we will be completing our session. So I think it's not working. OK. So this is uh, another is the BPS syndrome. You all are aware. The blephrophimosis epicanthus syndrome. It has the epicanthus inversus, telecanthus, ptosis, decreased horizontal palpebral aperture, ectropion, and flattened supraorbital ridges. These are the findings that can be seen in BPS syndrome. It, is, it can be done in two stages, or some uh, surgeons prefer to do in one stage. I would go for the two stage. In stage one, you uh, treat the epicanthus, the horizontal uh, lengthening of the uh, palpebral aperture with the lateral cantholysis, and also you can uh, repair the telecanthus with transfrontal wiring if you are uh, uh, used to it. And after six months, you can do correction of vertical toes, uh, vertical uh, uh, palpebral fissure with the bilateral sling surgery. This was a case of uh, ptosis. I operated along with Dr. Khurana, sir. And this was uh, the first stage you can see on this side. The epicanthal repair has been done along with the lateral cantholysis. And after six months, this was the result that we could give to the child. You can compare with the pre or post op. You cannot give 100% result, but definitely these are considered satisfactory results for such patients. So, take home message is ca careful pre operative evaluation is a must. Planning and counseling is again a must. Usually, results in satisfactory surgical results with happy parents and patients. Families should be aware the child needs long-term follow-up for visual development, ocular health, and possibility of revision surgery. Sometimes you've done a sling surgery at the age of seven or eight years, and they come over at the age of 20, 25 years again. So take, remember, and congenital, this is one of my best cases, one which I operated the uh, little girl got married, went to a honeymoon, and she sent this photograph to me from there that she was so happy after this dosis repair. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next talk with by Dr. Vanna Sharma. She's going to talk on necrotizing fasciitis of the legs. And this would be the last talk. Uh, just one question. Yeah. So we, even when we, uh, when we are using this uh, silicon sling, we are landing up with granulomas. So what do we, uh, how do we proceed? Uh, once, see, uh, to be careful that there should be no granuloma formation first. When you make the pocket, when where you are putting the knot of the, that pocket should be well uh, dissected so that you are placing the uh, knot and properly underneath that underneath the bonnet pocket. Sometimes in I, you leave it superficially in, in the subcutaneous area, definitely there will be granuloma. Good antibiotics are helpful and sometimes definitely if the um, child, because it is a foreign body, sometimes the children do not accept it. Granuloma is there. You treat with uh, conservative management initially, try to excise the granuloma, but if not working, you have to take the sling out. There is no other way out. So that is it. And sometimes it happens when you, uh, granuloma kafi salo ke baad bana hai, you don't take the sling out, you just cut the sling. Because of um, lo a lot, many time period has been passed, this fibrosis and everything takes place in the track. And as a result, the eyelid still stays up. So that can be one thing that can be tried. 